Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today I have a battle between two knights. The Iron Knight versus the Wolf Knight. Iron Man Model Prime versus Korag, the Wolf Knight from Power Rangers Mystic Force. Let's begin here. We're going to start off with the Model Prime armor. This is a combination of all of his suits and all of its abilities. And on all, it takes the best parts and just kind of combines them into one. Now, in terms of physical AP, Iron Man has shown that, again, this suit is on par if not greater than some of his other suits, but we're not going to focus on that here. We're really going to get on with his energy projection, being able to harm and even take down the likes of Fin Fang Foom, being able to take out Joe Fixit. And he has energy blasts that are so very specific, right, that they can't be absorbed by energy users. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but he did this to Captain Marvel and legit one shot her with the energy blast and he didn't even look at her he was like uh nope carol nope we're not doing this he's even matched vision pretty much matched vision's uh energy projection here so yeah he is um his repulsor blast and his gear is absolutely just crazy here being able to match characters like captain marvel who's actively trying to take him down because of civil war ii that bit i mean um go and keep this channel appropriate his armor also has regenerative factors as well this is actually pretty important here because this means his suit can take a lot of damage and he can simply just, well, repair it like it's nothing. The suit also can just be, a, can, he can pretty much be caught in an explosion and still be fine here. The suit is also incredibly durable. A Hulk Buster version of it was able to take on uh, Captain Marvel and actually cause her to use everything she had just to destroy at least one part of the suit before finally ending it all. In all honesty, he should have won that because this was a Hulk Buster made from that same armor and was made to be stronger than the World War Hulk Buster. Yeah, I know. It's stupid, ain't it? Now, in terms of speed, Iron Man should be faster than light to many times faster than light. Or you could probably get close to that measurable speed department. But let's just keep it at faster light to many times faster than light. This is important because Iron this, again, suit is a combination of all of his other armors. You know, he should be faster than the black and gold Model 42, who was able to, again, fly out of a black hole. and should be faster than the Bleeding Edge, who was able to outmove a gladiator, who has been able to know, who's known to move in the span of nanoseconds. This suit also comes with a DNA um, suppression field, being able to use this against Hyperion 13034. This armor is also incredibly durable, being able to take attacks from Regent. Now, this is a little bit debatable because Regent's powers and abilities don't really seem to have the same level as characters like, you know, the Posse Soul Stone. For example, he used Hyperion's Heat Vision or his um, Atomic Vision, I'm sorry, Iceman's Cryomancy and Hulk and Thor's Strength. However, Spider-Man and Iron Man were both able to survive Hyperion's Atomic Vision, which goes down to the molecular level. And is able to vaporize opponents. And yet Spider-Man was surviving this. You might say, oh, he was holding back. No, he was actively trying to, like, kill them. And he, um, he failed miserably. This suit also comes with its own version of the Hulkbuster. Now, while I could say this is probably superior to the World War Hulkbuster, we only have that for the last upgraded version of it. And I guess we could use that as well here. This is important because, one, his projection scales to Fin Fang Foom. And he could really scale to um, World War Hulk here. But let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say he's around the same level or if not superior to Fin Fang Foom. <laughs> this is important here because Fin Fang Foom was able to, you know, casually knock out characters like Terax, who's been able to split planets like they're nothing more than eggs. And he's been able to fight against, you know, the World Breaker Hulk himself, even take attacks from him, who's been able to destroy, or at least, sorry, almost destroy the Dark Dimension. He was actually destroying it in a fight with um, Red She-Hulk. And Umar even says, hey, um, you guys are destroying my realm. Could y'all, like, chill here? So we have an armor that's easily, many times faster than light, easily moving at immeasurable speeds, and, you know, just has all the gear and abilities. It has a samurai mode where he's able to use repulsor rays and even repulsor swords. So that's Iron Man for you. But in the other corner, we have the mighty Korag. Now, Korag or Leanbo is a corrupted knight from, well, Power Rangers Mystic Force, one of the most powerful verses out there. Now, here's where the um 
the scaling is important. Now, Korak is easily above, you know, the Mystic Titans, even above the base and the super modes of the Mystic Rangers, at least to a degree, to a degree here. However, his scaling comes from when fighting the Gatekeeper, and this is where it's important here. So, the Gatekeeper has the power to basically bring up the underworld or basically use her power to open portals and even being able to summon objects from different dimensions. She's even able to use her power to bridge dimensions. Now, this is important because what they were fighting for or what they find is from the underworld rising and the gatekeeper is able to bridge the underworld to our world, basically our dimension to their dimension this means that the gatekeeper should be around the universal levels of calibers sorry universal level calibers and that and the fact that not only was korak taking attacks from her but he straight up just took her down like just knocked her out now we actually enter where he can actually turn into a megazord of his own pretty much his own body able to turn giant is able to combine and summon castro now, Catastro is easily, I would have to say, faster than light. This is due to him crossing dimensions very easily and with him being able to appear um, when summoned very instantly. And I would also say he scales to the Red Phoenix or, or the Red Rangers Titan, Phoenix Titan. And this is important here because they actually are um, very compatible with each other for some weird reason. And then you have Korag, who is, again, above the Red Mystic Ranger, okay? Even around, I'll probably say, a bit superior to his super mode when he finally breaks free of the darkness. So, that being said, Limbo is Limbo actually has um, other powers and abilities, or sorry, Korag <laughs> has other powers and abilities, such as nullification, redirection, energy manipulation, energy projection, um... Actually, he has spell nullification as well, even having things like teleportation, being able to mind control others with magical hacks and magical abilities as well. So overall, Korag would be around the universal department, and he's actually exceptionally with weapons and skill actually being a knight. So he has a knight like fighting style and being able to compete with the other Mystic Force Rangers, even fighting against the SC SPD range, Shadow Ranger. Kruger. So he has a very extended, um, I guess you could say extended form of martial arts to a degree. So with that being said here, who do I think wins this matchup? Now, this is actually pretty interesting in my opinion. We have two knights going at it. We also know Iron Man as the Iron Knight versus Korag the Wolf Knight. So this is actually pretty impressive here. Now, what advantage do each of these guys take here? I would say Korag is physically superior to Iron Man, definitely in strength and durability. He's able to fight against powerful uh, rangers and actually is able to consistently beat them, such as the Solaris Ranger. Meanwhile, Iron Man would definitely take the speed and I would have to say the weaponry category as well. And this is important here because this means Iron Man's weaponry could us all sorry, Iron Man's weaponry is also multi-angle. So this gives him a significant edge over Korag because he can attack from multiple different angles in multiple different ways. So say if Korag gets behind him, Iron Man can still blast him from like rear cannons or any energy blast he can make up. Plus he can analyze him and know that Korag has magic as well. So that actually leads him into the fight with a pretty good degree of pretty much um, capabilities during this fight as well. However, I think at the end of the day, I am going to have to favor <coughs> excuse me uh korag during this fight and here's my reasons why right korag is from a much i would have to say a verse that's actually pretty equal pretty equivalent to marvel they have their own scaling from multiversal even outer versal scaling which is actually pretty important and i do think that korag's you know korag fighting against characters that have pretty similar abilities and even weaponry um, nearly on the same level as Iron Man, plus him being more, plus he has, I think he has better defensive capabilities, especially with his magic here. He can reflect Iron Man's attacks, he can bounce it back, absorb it, redirect it, plus there's the fact that if Iron Man can use a Hulk, can just use the Hulk buster all he wants, then this means that even if, um, you know, uh, Korag does get overwhelmed by the Hulk buster, which I do think he will. 
he can always summon Catastro. Now, Catastro can definitely can take care of Iron Man by himself here. But knowing how Korag Dash Lean Bow operates here, I think Korag is definitely going to be the one to pretty much just jump in and get the Megazord fight out the way or get the Centaur mode out the way. What's important here is also note that Korak's energy blast may actually be more powerful than Iron Man's. The Mystic Titans are actually one of the strongest Megazords in fiction. Uh, sorry, one of the stronger Megazords out there, probably on par with the Mighty Morphin Rangers um, Dino Ultra Zord, the complete version with Titanus. And you guys have already seen my scaling for that as well here. As well as my, you know, response or my debunks of allegations, I also put the Power Rangers at a multiversal caliber to where, you know, they're able to fight multiversal beings and the generations of the Rangers get stronger after that. And Mystic Force is actually one of the stronger generations of Rangers. They have all the hacks, all the abilities. However, at the end of the day, Korag is stronger. He has better hacks and he can summon Catastro, which honestly just puts it into his favor more times often than not so at the end of the day i would say that korak takes this fight nine times out of ten but let me know what you guys think down below please comment like and subscribe and share with your friends this is legendary grimlock and i'll see you guys later for another video peace